Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to practice calculating payoffs in an infinite game. As I claimed previously, if actors discount future utility, we can represent payoffs of an infinite game with infinite geometric series. And I've posted the sum of such a series on your screen. Now I just want to practice using it in the context of a game. Let's start with something simple. Here's the payoff matrix we've been using for the prisoner's dilemma. Let the, di let the discount factor equal 0.8, and suppose that we cooperate in every period. What is my total utility for the game? Well, I gave you that discount equals 0.8, so that is simple enough. You just stick the 0.8 where the delta is. We then just need to figure out what x is, and we can calculate the sum. So x is going to be our payoff for cooperation in every period, and you just have to go to the matrix here and find that x. So you've got to cooperate, cooperate, you find that there's a 3 there, and we're cooperating every period, so it's just going to, it's going to be 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, except we're going to be discounting at every period, which is a geometric series, which gives you there. So the 3 goes where the x is, uh, the discount is 0.8, so that's going to take over for the delta. We plug those numbers in, and we calculate that, and we get 15. This is really a pretty simple case, but there are some more complicated calculations we're going to need in order to solve these games properly. For example, what is my payoff for mutual defection in the fifth period forward? Essentially, we want to ignore the first four periods and see what happens after, and only what happens after, not what happens before. And the formula we use for this looks like that. We keep the denominator the same, 1 minus delta. Uh, for the numerator, we take the delta, raise it to the number period we are looking at, minus 1, and multiply it by x. And that might seem a little strange, and you might be wondering where the heck it came from, so let's look at this. And the idea here is that if you chop off the first few terms of geometric series, what remains is still a geometric series. So this is the geometric series from the Kissing Game in the video that introduced geometric series. And we should all agree that this is a geometric series. You have one foot, you multiply that by one half, you get six inches. You multiply that by one half, you get three inches, and so forth. But you'll notice if I chop off the first term, we still have a geometric series. The only difference is now we're starting with six inches instead of a foot. And again, if I chop off six inches, we still have a geometric series. It's just starting with a different sum. Now it's three inches. And that's what this formula is simulating. We divide by 1 minus delta to get the sum of the geometric series. And the numerator up here gives us the starting point that we want. We're essentially delaying the start of the geometric series by n periods. Now you still might be curious why the exponent is n minus 1 and not just n. And I think a couple of examples will help clarify this. The first time we play, there should be no discount factor. So we should be setting n equal to 1. So this is saying, what's the sum of a geometric series for the first, uh, well, from the first term forward. So we're going from period 1 forward. And we already know what that looks like. It's, it's supposed to just be x over 1 minus delta. So if we plug in 1 for n, you get 1 minus 1, which equals 0. So you have delta raised to 0. And anything raised to the 0th power equals 1. So we're left with just x over 1 minus delta, which is what it should be. We know that this is true. We looked at that many times in the past. And you know here we've just validated uh, what we've been saying for this particular case of the first period. And if we want to do it for the second period instead, we should be only discounting once. And so if we make n equal to, n equal two, uh, we accomplish precisely this. Uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, so you just are left with delta to the x over 1 minus discount. All right, so I think that might help uh, make that a little bit more clear. And so with that, let's get back to our question. What is my payoff for mutual defection from the fifth period forward? So we're just defecting from period 5 uh, all the way through until the end of time. And so we're going to grab our 1 from here, the payoff for mutual defection. And we're going to make n equal to 5, and we have our answer, which is, uh, of course, it's going to simplify down to discount to the fourth over 1 minus discount. All right, I hope that was clear. Now, lastly, we might want to know what the payoff of some action is up until a certain point of the game. For example, suppose we cooperated in the first four periods before we started defecting here in the uh, example that we just went over. We might want to know what the total payoff for the first four periods of cooperation is. And it might be too cumbersome to count 
uh, each period individually, especially if we're doing this for a lot of periods. So we want to have a general solution rather than just having to calculate each individual period's payoff by hand and then manually adding them up. And there's a, there is, in fact, a shortcut. Um, to give you the intuition of what I'm about to do, I want to go back to this illustration. We already know how to find the sum of this sequence. And we also know how to find the sum of this sequence. So these two are simply going to be the first equation minus the second. So we can sort of get to what we're looking for by taking a larger geometric series and subtracting it by a smaller one that's part of the original geometric series. It's kind of clever, and you might not think of it right off the bat, but you know, once you see this, it might become pretty clear what we're trying to do here. and uh, You might be able to figure this out on your own, but that's what you're going to get. And uh, just to be clear, this is your payoff for the entire geometric series. And this is the part that we don't care about, where n is the period where something new starts happening. You'll notice that this is an equivalent expression, so we're going to rewrite it like this, as you see here. It's a little bit easier to deal with, and that's why we prefer it this way. So if we cooperate up until the fifth period, we can plug, into some number, plug in some numbers and we can get to this where the 3 is the payoff for cooperation, and 5 is the period when we start doing something else. Um, and uh, we can simplify it to that, and that's basically telling us how much cooperating is worth for the first four rounds. And you'll also notice that for the last two examples, I've kept delta generic, so this could be for any discount factor whatsoever. I don't have to tell you what the discount factor is beforehand, and you can still get a general solution like that. And so that's really useful. And all of these things are going to be really important. All right, we're finally done with the math for uh, what we need to solve the infinite prisoner's dilemma. Join me next time when we look at the first of many equilibria to that game.